Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I'm here with another C Sharp tutorial to you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with reading multiple records from a CSV or text file. So let's get right into it. Firstly, for your Visual Studio project, uh, just go to the actual project folder, click on the middle folder, which will probably just be the name of your project, then go to bin, debug, netcore app, and then in here. You may need to run your program once for this folder to appear, but this is where you want to put your text file. Right, before we begin, in our main function, we are going to have a string, and it's going to be a string array, and it's going to be called output, and this is going to be every record we read from a file, and it's going to store them all. And then this for loop is just going to loop through each element of that uh, string array and print each element. So we can print out all the records we've read. Here we're going to have a function. And we're going to basically use this to read multiple records. But before we go into that, if you are new to my tutorials for C Sharp, pay attention. Otherwise you can skip ahead a bit if you want to. We need to make our record matches function. So we do public static bool. Record matches. String search term. String record and int position of search term. What's going on here? Essentially, we're making a function to check if a record matches the search condition. And we need the search term, the piece of data, the value data we're, we're looking for. This could be someone's name, someone's age, etc. String record is essentially a record that we're searching for our search term and it's going to each field of that record's divided up into its own element. And position of search term is simply which field of a record can we expect to find the search term that we want to look for. And so what we can essentially do is we can do if record and then which is referring to this string array here, position of search term, which will be the field we want to check for our search term. For instance, if it's a name, it could be the second field, for example. Because we don't want to bother looking for the name in a first field, right? And then we do dot equals, and then we just put in search term. And if that's true, then the record contains the search criteria we were looking for, so we can return a true. Otherwise, we return a false, because it didn't. And we're going to be using this function in the code to make it a bit neater. Now, let's go into the read multiple record string array function. So we got public static string array. Read multiple records. Then we do string search term. Like I said earlier, this is going to be the piece of data we're looking for in our records to say we found a match. This could be their name, an, an age, an ID and many other, any data you actually want. Then we want to do string file path. This is just going to be, this is going to be the file that we want to actually search. And then int position of search term is where, which field of a record can we expect to find for search term? Which doesn't seem too important when it comes to a very simple database that we have, which is literally just a flat file text file at this point. But for more complicated things, you might have, let's say, James as a first name and James as a surname, but you're looking for anyone with a first name of James. And so this system allows for you to have that complexity where two potential fields of a record could in theory match the search term, but you can specify which field you're after. So let's get right into it. Firstly, we're going to do position of search term minus minus. And the reason being is, let's say we've got a file and we have ID, name and age. So let's say when you look at the file, you instinctively think, right, the first field of a record in this file is going to be the ID. The second one, the name, the third one, the age. And you're correct. However, in the world of arrays, you don't start on one, you start on zero. So it becomes zero, one, and two. And that's just not as logical for most humans. Some who are probably used to working with arrays probably won't care, but we're making this more 
user-friendly. It doesn't actually matter. You can not do this if you want to, but I like doing it to make the code more accessible to beginners. Because there's a lot to take in when doing records and file handling, and I kind of want to eliminate getting confused with arrays. But you can get rid of it if you want, otherwise keep it. We're making an array list next. It's going to be called records, and it's going to be a new array list. We are going to store all of the records that we read that match the search condition into this array list. An array list is basically an array with more functionality. One being you can change the size dynamically. With an array, you have to define the size when the, at the start of the program. An array list, you can just expand and decrease the size whenever you want. And then we're going to do a string array here called records not found, and it's just going to print have one string inside. This is just a return message if you can't find any records. Right. The next thing you want to do is you, we want to do a try catch statement. So you want to do try brackets here. Then after you want to do catch exception ex, and then inside the catch code we want to firstly return record not found. And this is basically going to return the record not found message that we have here. However, if you want, I've added this in just in case you want to actually return the error. What you could do if you want to is do throw new application exception and a message and then ex which will basically print out the actual error message stored in the exception ex variable this would need to go before your return function before your return statement to actually work though it's there if you want it you don't actually need that but definitely definitely include this and try catch is essentially try to execute some code in here if everything goes well carry on after the catch otherwise if something does go wrong like an error execute what's in the catch statement right inside the try statement we've got quite a bit of code but don't worry we're going to break this down and you're going to understand it string lines literally we are opening up the file and we are going to give each record or line of a file its own element in a string array so we do string lines equals system.io.file.readAllLines. lines. Then we do an at file path. This is referencing our file path string here, and we need to put in that symbol before it because we're doing file handling. After that, now that we've read the file, we've got all the lines on it in a string. We're going to search that string and find every record that matches our search term. So how do we do that? Well, firstly, we need a for loop. That's one of the simple and best ways to loop for an array. You do int i equals zero. i less than lines dot length. So we're going to loop until we get to the end of the line string array. And then we want to do i plus plus to move on to the next element. And then what we do is we create a string array again called fields. And essentially this is going to contain one record so one line and each field of that record or line will have its own array element for this loop iteration. So we can analyze basically any element or any field we want easily. So we just do string fields equals lines i. So basically the current line or record we're looking at, which is referenced in this string array here. And we do dot split comma. And that basically is our delimiter. You could change that to something else if you want, but CSVs are the most common. What essentially we're doing is we've got a string here. And we're like, right, everything up to the comma, put it in its own element. Everything up to the next comma, put it in its own element. And the process continues. Then what we can do is we can use our record matches function, which we created here. And we can pass in the search term. We can then pass in the fields array we made here and then to position a search term. If we come back to here, essentially, right, let's find which element are we expecting to have or which field of a record are we expecting to have the search term be in to match our record. And then we can literally with this code, like explained before, check the specific field of that record or line and see if it matches our search term. 
And then we can return to or false. So obviously, calling a function inside an if by default checks are true. So if the record matches, add it to our records array list because it's a record that we want to read because it has a search term requirement or condition that we want. And that's basically it for the loop. And we just do that for the whole file. Unlike with just reading a record, we don't stop once we found the record because we want to read all of them. After that, we're going to check if the array list is empty. So we can check essentially if the first element, which is number zero, is empty. So we do records and then check for the zeroth element and check if it's equal to null. If it is, just return our record not found string array that we made just to return you can add more messages to it if you want but that's what we're doing because we don't want to return try to return something but we don't want to return nothing we want to either return that we found records and what those records are or that we didn't find any and technically no, no errors could occur and that and this array list could end up being empty so you have to do this quick check after that, what we're doing is we are returning a string array. And this is a little weird statement here. So essentially, we're using brackets here just to help with it make it neat. But when we put string array in these brackets, what we're essentially doing here is we are casting our records array list to become a string array. And what we can essentially we could do, so we put in brackets here, string array. Then we do records dot to array. Then we make sure it's also then a string array, because that's what we want. And by doing this, we are returning this array list, and it's going to be in an array format, because we no longer need to exactly change the length dynamically. And that's it for the code. So back, like I said before, the string output will be equal to whatever is returned in this function. So. Let's look at the file. So as you can see, we have got ID, name, and age. And we're going to firstly check, we're going to basically do a check to see, return every record with who is 23 years old. So, pass in the string 23, we pass in records.txt, because that's the file name, and we pass in a three, because the age is the third field of a record. And so let's click play and see what happens. As you can see, it has printed out three records. Let's compare it with the file. One, two, two, Bill and 23. One, three, three, Bob and 23. Six, seven, six, five, Milk and 23. Those are all of the records of people who are the age of 23 in the file. Let's check to return everyone who's called Bill. So we pass in Bill and we pass in for number two because the name is the second field of a record in this file. So let's click play. It's returned two records. As you can see, one, two, 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 Bill, 23. 1, 2, 3, 4, Bill, 43. It's returned every Bill in the file. So guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. And subscribe if you want to see more tutorials to help you get an A in your course for Core Exam. If anyone you know is struggling or you think this would be helpful for them, please share it. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot and have a great day.